Good morning or afternoon, depending on when you're watching or listening to this. Welcome to Talk HR UK. I'm Simon Gear, And when I'm not talking to fantastic HR people on these kind of podcasts, I'm helping HR directors, MDs and CEOs recruit and source the best HR talent in the southeast of the UK. There's the plug. Right. So today I'm very lucky. I am being joined by Hannah Mitchell. So good morning, Hello. Hannah. Good morning. Thanks, Thanks for your for time me. this morning. <laughs> And um, live from home, I see, which is as everyone has been so far. No one's been in the office yet for one of these, but uh, I've been, I'm enjoying the backgrounds. They're fantastic. I know, yeah. I'm in my, um, my little boy's bedroom and I've been in here since, since March and actually since I returned from maternity leave in March. So, wow. um, yeah, quite bizarre, but getting used to it. And hopefully we won't have a gate crash from one of the children <laughs> while we're on the call. So. I, I kind of hope we do, but, you know, and I... <laughs> I, I hope he doesn't mind you being in his room. You know, he may look back on this, you know. <laughs> anyway, so um, basically we've got a plan to talk today, Hannah, really about your journey. And I wanted to start off with a little bit of a, an introduction to yourself. So where do you work? What do the organisation do? Tell us a bit about um, your, your current scenario, please. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm the HR Director at Fittleworth Medical Limited. And we're an independent dispenser for ostomy, continence and rectal irrigation products. We're known as a DAC, so a dispensing appliance contractor. And we provide services for the NHS and we provide a, a, a localised, personalised service for our clients throughout the UK. So we service over um, 55, about 57, it's going up, it's increasing 57,000 clients throughout the UK. We have 39 dispensing centres throughout the UK and we have a team of about 350 members of staff now. So um, our headquarters are down in Little Hampton and we've also got a national distribution centre in the Midlands in Nottingham and then we've got sites throughout, throughout the UK. Uh, probably one of the most special things to, to say when I talk about Fittleworth is it's truly a really special place to work. We've got such an amazing culture where our people are really hardworking, very loyal, very committed to our purpose and our mission and the difference that we make to our clients. So it's been a really special time through COVID to just see that everyone's rising to the challenge and to see our values in action. It's, um, it's been really rewarding. For me personally, I live in Brighton and I have two young children. We've got Jacob, he's four and a half and Ava is one now. So I returned from maternity leave in March. So right wow. at the height of when COVID <laughs> kind of came. So quite a time to return to work really. And it almost feels in some ways that I actually haven't because I've, I've literally just stepped into the room. But, you know, there's been some perks to it. I've been able to see the children every day. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting time for, for many of us. Definitely. That's a little yeah. bit about me. <laughs> No, that's fantastic. And, and you're right, the, the timing of, of your return is, that's a huge piece, isn't it? Because you've had to be a really big part of guiding the organisation through this difficult time. The instant you've just had a, a lovely, fan, you know, fantastic time off for pers fantastic personal reasons. So it's uh, super challenging. So, but um, well done. And I, w I want to add in something about Hannah here. When we, we started doing these podcasts probably a couple of months now, and I'm really enjoying doing them, but your name, Hannah, has come up about three times from different people and who've all said, oh, make sure you speak to Hannah. And I was like, OK. So, you know, the third time I thought, right, I really better had do this. So um, <laughs> no pressure, but you, you came no highly pressure. recommended by many people. So uh, Thank you. Um, that's, that's good to know. So g give us a little bit now about your, your journey, because you've been at Fittleworth quite some time and you, you worked your way up, didn't you? I did, yeah. Um, I've been with Fiddleworth for eight years. So I started, I started my HR path, as it were, in the motor industry right at the beginning. But I really began to build my HR career at Fiddleworth, and I was so fortunate to work for a really inspiring HR leader and um, one that I continue to have a, a really good relationship with, and continues to mentor me, and we work together. Um, so yeah, since I joined Fittleworth in 2012, I've been really invested in. I've had fantastic opportunities to develop my career and progress. So I started out initially as a HR advisor, moved up into a business partner role, then to a HR manager, and then a couple of years ago um, landed my dream job, HR director. So 
excellent. Well, it's great that an organization can, can offer that, um, you know, that pathway. And I, I, could, I remember when you became HR director, because I, as, as we know, I know your predecessor. And um, I remember he said to me, um, when we were speaking, he said, the, the good news is I don't need your help because, you know, Hannah's going to step up and take on the role. And I was, we were, you know, genuinely delighted for you. Although, you know, it's always nice to, uh, to help businesses and, and thank you for thinking of us when we, we helped you cover your maternity. But um, it, it's great to see that, that talent and succession internally in an organisation. So, uh, so congrats. So, thank you. So your learnings and, and, and HR this year, I suppose. I mean, I know there are a number of areas that you're very passionate about within HR and um, I wanted to give you the opportunity today I suppose to tell us about what what you feel you've achieved in the organization because I know there have been some fantastic results outside the I mean both commercial business results and people metric results as well so um, yeah tell us your your learnings really across this year since you've been back well and do you know what's really funny is I've only been back since March but I, I, I struggle to think of the best ones to share because there's been so many learnings um, and I'm sure many people will relate to this. You know, it, it, it's, it's quite um, incredible, really, how much has happened since March, since I've been back. And um, I guess just to set a bit of context, before I, I went on my maternity leave, our business was making some real strong strides towards employee engagement and people leadership, and that being a real core for us, making sure that you know, we look after our people, we engage our people, we develop and take care of our people that ultimately the results for the business are, are, are going to come and our clients are going to get that amazing service that, that we take so much pride in. So we've, we've started that journey and we've collaborated with other engagement providers, PCOM being one of them, you know, who really helped us on that journey to start engaging with our employees and communicating. So leading up to this year, that's put us in such good stead to deal with COVID, you know, we've got that dialogue, we've got that appetite in the business where our teams and our leadership are communicating really regularly. So we send these surveys out all the time, we're talking, we're making improvements, we're responding to the feedback that we're getting. So that was really good in the sense that the communication was there, you know, it wasn't something that we suddenly had to, and, and, and by having that, that mechanism was really valuable for us. Um, through COVID so that we were able to continue that dialogue and we were able to do it virtually you know, through the system and stuff so with some of the challenges that we were, were faced by. So some of, a lot of the, our approach around COVID we've really stepped up our game you know we've really looked at we were quite quick to come into action and say right what what do we need to do to support our employees um, to make sure that we're continuing to give an amazing service to our clients, you know, because this was a really tough time and we wanted to make sure that our clients continue to receive that amazing service that they've always, always got from us. So um, for us, the most important thing was to have really strong internal comms right at the outset, be transparent with our, with our team, be honest. And we, we kind of, we came out at the outset, we had a really strong purpose that we communicated and we branded it, we had this strong operation Apollo, which was we're gonna take care of our people, we're gonna take care of our clients, and we're gonna take care of our business. And that's really carried us through that strong messaging. You know, from all our people, it's very clear, those three key objectives. And everything we've done through COVID has been off the back of that. You know, so taking care of our people through care packages, like many, many companies are doing. Um, but all of our comms have been driving that message and driving that purpose for us. Um, so the internal comms being absolutely been really key for us. And we've been stepping up our game in terms of having weekly huddles and involving people in communications as well. So right. obviously our teams want to hear from the leadership, but we want to hear from our teams. And we've been collaborating uh, with our external partners. We've also been bringing our clients in to talk to us about the impact. And that's been so valuable. So. Mm we've been involving many people in that communication journey and giving people also the opportunity to develop. So we've been having weekly huddles, which were initially led by our director team. And then we slowly started rolling those out to more people to lead. And through that, we were getting them to share insights, you know, their personal experiences, what they were going through COVID. And, and we had that time to celebrate 
you know, standout performance, standout contributions. And our shout out list just kept growing and growing and growing through COVID. <laughs> and um, it's been really powerful for us, the internal comms. So we've had like those weekly huddles. We've had our leadership in particular, our managing director has been very open with uploading uh, regular vlogs and his thoughts and reflections and having that honest, authentic conversation. We've done quite a lot around engagement as well in terms okay. of getting our teams to, to do things, to spend time with virtual lunches, um, competitions, trying to bring a level of positivity to, to things where we can, to say, let's have some dance competitions, let's raise some money for charity. We've been in a very fortunate position. I'm very mindful of that. You know, not every, every company has, everyone's had different challenges. And for us, it's about trying to support our teams, take care of, take care of our teams. We've got a real diverse base workforce. So we have some that have stayed on site as key workers through, mm. through COVID, some that have stayed at home. So it's trying to come up with internal communications and engagements that meet all those needs. And, um, and it's been a challenge, but that they've been our key areas really is focusing on our internal comms and our engagement and, and well-being as well. We've really, like many companies, really had to step up our game there in terms of upskilling our managers, helping. It's, it's a different, I think we talked about it the other day, Simon, it's a different skill that we've suddenly needed very quickly, one that we're not flexing, a muscle we're not flexing yeah. for quite some time. <laughs> and it's, it's being able to have those meaningful conversations and show that emotional intelligence and not always having the answers but the ability to just listen and be there for each other and and show vulnerability so trying to work with the managers to give them those skills and and also from a hr perspective we we also partnered as well we would call out with people that were working from home or were shielding or vulnerable just to check in and see how they're doing so giving them the skills so that when we're having those meaningful conversations that they're, they're actually meaningful so how are yes i'm fine okay well what does that mean what have you been doing how's bob you know how's your dog how's is it nice you know and just making it really personal and um there's so much to share but i would say i would call those things out and one of the things that we also recognized early on is that we don't necessarily have the expertise in all these areas so we we leaned on quite a few people we started building relationships and collaborating outside with well-being experts who could come okay. in and do some talks for us some mindful sessions and and recognizing that actually we need to move quite quickly on this we might not have time to make this perfect let's just let's just move and show the intent and and see what the appetite is and that that was it a lot of trial and error along the way and almost making quicker decisions you know so where we might have wanted to come up with a plan before it was kind of like that sounds good let's go for it and um, it's paid off we can see through our engagement and through our surveys that our, our employees are responding to it so we were very quick to ask about how we were supporting people through covid um, and kind of get ideas on how we could do better so it's been a it's been a journey i'd say our highlight would probably be the engagement with our people and the support that they feel they've received we're actually seeing the highest level of engagement that we've had um in the business at the moment um so we're very fortunate and grateful for that that's amazing isn't it i mean when you think what a what a challenging time it's been for people for all manner of reasons you know professional personal you know it, stress has been coming from every angle but to get that level of engagement from staff who are going through that and i think it's worth pointing out and reminding people i mean your business you are there supplying the NHS. So you guys have been, you know, very busy, basically making sure you, you know, provide the service and the products and, and, and the, you know, the support that you do to your clients. So mm -hmm. to, to run with that and not drop the ball on, on engagement and looking after your staff is just a great achievement, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our staff have been brilliant, you know, and we've all feel very inspired about the role we had to play and making sure that, our clients still got that amazing service and yeah there was definitely that sense of camaraderie and um commitment and focus to make sure that we supported each other and our clients so the mission and the three objectives have always been really really clear for us that you know, we we have to take care of our people so that they can take care of our clients you know so it's been very powerful for us it's been difficult 
as, as with many companies, you know, we're all navigating all the challenges and the intricacies and the, the individual circumstances, especially from a HR perspective, you know, how do we deal with this? We've not had this happen before, but the intent is there that actually the, there's a reason we're doing this, the purpose is strong and we're going to support our, our employees and, and them seeing that has been really powerful for us. Oh, that's that's great, and and to get those high engagement scores, I just, I think that's 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 wonderful, and and bringing in your external customers as well to to assist on this branded mission, that's you know really really innovative. I like it. So, I mean, the, the projects you've completed then. I mean, you've mentioned engagement, uh, comms, and well-being. Are there any other specific kind of HR pieces that you've been running with as a business this year that you've had to deliver perhaps outside of COVID. I know that that's taken over an awful lot of the day job for a lot of HR people, but um, outside that, what were you kind of working on anyway? So we've, we've been working on building um, an LMS <laughs> and um, we're, we're actually quite a few other projects really. And that, that's, that's also been important for us is to not take our foot off the gas you know mm. and knowing what what time is the business ready to say actually no business as usual we've got a strategy and and actually is there an opportunity for us to accelerate some of these things and what works now and so we we've been progressing with a learning um, updating our learning management system we're working with one of our providers on that at the moment and and that's that's kind of shifted slightly in terms of our approach and our ability to be a bit more agile with it and actually say it doesn't have to be perfect you know this is and, I, and our partners have been fabulous with that in terms of making sure that it's a simple system and it delivers the objectives that we have so we've also been looking at building our employer brand and that's been really important for us because we've got such a lovely culture at mm. Fittleworth and there's a real opportunity for us to sell our story better so that we can attract the best talent and that's something that we've been working on on building and one of the reasons we're talking today is to try and um to build our employer brand is, is really key for us so and it's interesting you mentioned that i mean you you said that one of the dreaded words um little hampton earlier i mean this is where another one of my clients work and it's it's quite a, it's it's very suitable or not at all suitable isn't it so it's it can be i imagine quite hard from a talent attraction perspective for you guys sometimes yeah, I mean, we, because we've got sites throughout the UK, geography is always, you know, it's always going to represent challenges for us. And, and really, we've just got to get really strengthen and sharpen our skill sets in recruitment. And, and it's going to be interesting as well in terms of how HR is going to evolve the recruitment process in general. Um, for us, there's opportunities to expand our scope and how we look at new positions potentially you know virtual positions the different arrangements for them um, but over the years we've got quite good at attracting good talent and building and growing talent in the areas as well so um yeah that, that that that's for us it's about making sure that our expectations of the positions that they're, they're growing as well so what are we going to expect from the certain roles that we have in head office in Littlehampton what do they look like now and what are they going to look like in the future and how are we going to best attract that talent um, and we're, that's something that is going to be important for us and form part of our strategy into the future is making sure that that process is fit for purpose really um, so yeah. oh, definitely I mean I've, we've always thought as you know people that have, have partnered with you guys over the years you're one of those organizations that very much punch above your weight. Do you know what I mean? It's from, from the outside, if you don't know the organization and you're not in the sector, et cetera, you might just, you know, SME in the, in the medical devices mm -hmm. you know, space. But to, to have known people that have come in on, on fixed term contracts and back out, they speak so highly of the organization and the culture and the people and, you know, compare you to big global players in terms of some of the initiatives you put in place. I mean, even that, you know, branding an internal comm strategy and bringing in your external partners throughout um, the pandemic, I, I think it is, is a long way far ahead of some of the businesses we work with that perhaps are you know, more, a larger, more established. So it is, it's getting that message out there, isn't it? And making sure people know everything behind the front door of the organisation. Absolutely, absolutely. So any, um, I always ask this, so sorry, but any, any mistakes, any do differentlies from this year that you think, oh, we, I'd maybe shift that to the left a bit or uh, do something in a different way? It's a tricky one. I'm thinking about it because um, 
yeah, we've, we've spent a lot of time as a leadership team and, and as a HR team reflecting. We've always been even more so with COVID, you know, what's gone well, what do we want to keep, what do we, you know, actually let's take the time to have this course and think, you know, what's worked well and what opportunities are there for us. Um, I'm really struggling with it. And and I have only been back since March, so I'm hoping that's a good sign that I've it's not. It's a fair been. comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll keep thinking about the the kind of mm. do differently. You know, what what have we learned? What mistakes have we made? Um, I'm sure there are some. I guess I'd bring it back more to the learnings. You know, one of the learnings that we've that we've made as a business in HR and and as part of the senior leadership team is be bold be brave be vulnerable and these are things that are starting to creep in in terms of our, our our work ethic and how you know things that we would have said we would do um over the space of two three years we've we've delivered in the space of months or weeks in some mm. cases so it's kind of if you've got an idea and it, it's kind of go with it a bit more and, and that's one of the learnings we've had i would say and try and think outside of the box a bit more and and I think one of the challenges now as well is is trying to almost carve out how we want certain things to be you know versus how they have been and versus trying to make something that we've done before better actually do we just scrap it and do it completely differently so for us as a leadership team and the HR team it's yeah it's being bold it's being brave and making decisions as well so I'll have to come back on the do differently. Well, you've I'll got a good idea of what you want to do, at least. That's a good thing, you know, and, and, yeah. and how you will, how you have been doing things differently. Maybe that's a, that's a good interview answer. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> so um, and one thing you mentioned there, and actually, and we, we said um, in our brief chat yesterday, we'd, we'd pick up on this, is, is leadership. Um, and again, you're, you're a great example as a business. You work in it's quite a technical organisation, so you attract people with those very you know, technical mindsets, which sometimes can provide leadership challenges. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're technically great at what they do, but have they got that broader piece to lead? Now, it sounds like you're doing an awful lot to support people and make sure they have all the tools they need. Um, how, you know, how do you approach the, the leadership piece at Little Work? What have you put in place? Well... Um, we've, we've, we've had some really positive feedback on the leadership through, through COVID in particular over the last year, the feedback around um, people feeling that they trust in the leadership, they know what the, the direction we're taking the business in, and they feel well communicated to, well supported, and it's wonderful to read this feedback. And a lot of what's coming out from it is the constant communication, the authenticity of it, and being honest being transparent and talking to our people, engaging with our people and having that, that two-way interaction. And um, I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of what we've learned through COVID is the, the importance of our leaders being human, you know, and truly connecting with their teams to inspire them and motivate them and breaking down any barriers. And, for me being able as leaders to model the right behaviors that's something that we've really been focusing on you know so making sure that we're taking leave and showing that our teams that they should be taking leave mm. and they should be having that downtime and you know where we're making positive posts through uh, mental health awareness week making sure that we post videos of us going for a run and 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 modeling those really good behaviors so for me it's definitely being authentic as le as leaders being transparent being honest being human um they're they're kind of the the key things i i would call out um you mentioned vulnerability as well and that is interesting because quite a few of these there were um christine at eurovia and uh, peter actually last week at Air navigation mentioned that there is really it's a good thing to say i don't know because it's never happened before Mm -hmm. and we'll throw it back you know what do you think and start getting ideas and it sounds like as a business again you've brought in external expertise and experience to help you make some of the decisions but um yeah i think i think to be uh, almost take a bit of pride in your vulnerability as a leader i think rather than being the old school everything i do is great you know the, no mistakes yeah. you know push it under the carpet kind of thing absolutely and and be open to learn you know so and 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 almost get ideas from your team to say actually 
not having a great day. Um, what do you guys, one of the things we did, which was really good with the wellbeing is we engaged um, an external provider, a really great um, person, Ben, I'll, I'll update, he'll probably connect in on this. And he delivered an amazing session with us on having um, wellness check-ins that we did and talking about our wellness toolkits and things we do to keep well. Mm. And we were all sharing examples on things that we do to relax, things that we do to re-energize. And it was fantastic because we were sharing, we were almost helping each other, you know, and it was, it was really beneficial. So I think as leaders, we need to be open to learn as well, learn from our teams. Mm. that's really important i think and, and having that you don't need to have all the answers you know and being genuine and as long as the commitment's there and and one other thing as well is as leaders and there's a lot out there about this but we're in service of our people so just as much as we serve our clients and that's absolutely integral but we're there to take care of our people and and that's absolutely been our focus certainly since since covid always but it's been heightened even more so is how can we take care of you you know what what do you need and um and it's certainly not a one size fits all and it changes as, as leaders we've got to be really responsive you know one day you might have a team member that's in really good spirits and then another day it's not so it's it's being able to flex that muscle to really understand and connect with our people definitely oh no and and as you say it's these these things that will stand you apart from other other employers and it's it's getting that message out there to to your next wave of hires, and it's a lot of that's digital work, isn't it? These days, you know, there, there seems to be um, a real, you know, or over the last ten years, we has been a shift to how how we get that EVP out in the market, and I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, you you guys have got lots to work with, which is fantastic. So it's just focusing on that that communication. Okay, so well, lastly, the future of HR. I'm asking everyone this because um, everyone's had to deliver. It feels like three years worth of projects in four months, you know, yeah. um, people have probably changed their views from the, you know, over here to over here on certain matters of, you know, particularly the areas you mentioned, you know, comms, engagement, well-being have jumped right up the agenda uh, and other things have fallen off completely. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think HR needs to be thinking about and focusing on in, in 2021, 2022 as an industry? Well... And I've been reading, like many HR leaders at the moment, there's so much out there. You know, there's so much insights. You know, like, oh, that, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, I guess the first thing I would say is there's absolutely a future for HR is the number one, um, even more so now. Uh, for me, I think it's going to be, it may vary depending on the business and the business needs, but it's being able to identify what the business need because right now as well there's no one business that's experiencing i mean there'll be different challenges but everything's so different and it's the ability for hr to recognize what the business really needs and work strategically and partner with the business and collaborate internally and externally because it's building those capabilities and there's going to be a lot of experts out there in well-being there's going to be a lot of experts out there in engagement and not and recognizing what you can and can't do and building those relationships and collaborating outside to bring in the expertise and and for me that's going to be really important so that hr can move at the right pace and not be left behind and actually drive the business forward and bring in those solutions you know so say this is collaborating and bringing in the new ideas and for me that's that's probably one of the things we're going to be focusing on is how we can help the business drive the business forward and recognize the need so i'd absolutely recommend having that engagement platform having a method of understanding feedback from your employees and your teams to know where what's needed and collaborating with experts in certain areas to to make to bring the right solutions for the business and also not a one size fits all and creating an environment where people can truly thrive at work as human beings and bring their whole selves to work. So we're talking a lot about right now when we're looking at our strategy is that personalized journey. What value, what intrinsic value does every individual bring and how can we go on that journey with them? And I think that's gonna be really important moving into the future is, is that personal approach. 
and that's a challenge isn't it because you've as you say you've got a it, 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 it's a very tailored approach to careers rather than just having you know your six job families and they get that and they get that and a, a bit of a sheep dip approach it's um yeah respecting people as individuals what they can contribute where, where they can develop and i like your almost building an external matrix rather than an internal one of, of skills and expertise because i mean a lot a lot of people have been banging the the agile working drum for years and mm -hmm clearly there are some advantages we've seen that this year to have a an available pool of internal and or external talent that can deliver quickly you know much much more quickly than expected and then move on to the next project whilst we maintain that business as usual piece so that that's one school of thought but it's still so unknown isn't it mm -hmm. yeah crazy times well hey look Thank you so much for your time. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. And I think yours is a, is a really great journey. You know, we've seen you, as you say, you joined a business with a certain amount of HR experience as an HR advisor. You clearly had a, a great mentor that um, helped you on the way. And, and, and I, I suspect got out of your way in a number of uh, situations <laughs> and let you uh, find your own path, which is the best thing, you know. And um, he obviously, he did this podcast last week. So I hope he doesn't mind us name checking him there. But a really nice guy who I've, I've known a long time and he speaks very highly of you, Hannah, and one of the people that recommended we talk to you. So it's been great to hear about yourself, your career journey and how well Fittleworth are doing as a business. Sounds like, you know, if you're out there looking for roles, this is a great local Sussex brand who are going places. But um, national. We're national. national brand, sorry, <laughs> apologies. I'm so Southeast focused, you see, it's a must <laughs> It's my, one of my, uh, my weak points. Well, hey, look, thank you so much for your time because I know you're really busy and um, I look forward to catching up with you again very soon to hear about, you know, new initiatives. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. Take care.